sing that one more time. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Oh, I love you. brothers and sisters if you have no other reason to praise him you ought to praise him because he loves you he loves you he loves you from the very beginning even to this time God loves you and we cannot help ourselves but to love him back amen amen what a joy it is to be back here in this house of prayer as we gather together today to worship him in spirit and in truth God is good and all the time we praise and give God the glory for bringing us safely once more to this house of prayer I don't know about you my brothers and sisters I feel blessed I feel joyful I feel excited that God has given us yet another beautiful day that we can come together and lift him up in praise so while we're here together as brothers and sisters in Christ let's lift up his name let's give him the glory and the honor God is worthy God is worthy God is worthy of all our praise and if you know that he has done something good for you why don't you praise him today because God has been good to us amen amen, amen. father we thank you for this time of worship we thank you now, O oh Lord, for this time of praise. We ask now that as we have gathered together in this place on this day, that God, you will fill this house with your presence, with your power and your purpose as we come together now to worship you in spirit and in truth. This is our prayer. We pray in Jesus' name. Let us all say it together. Amen. Amen. Let us please stand as we observe our responsive reading for today. Our responsive reading is coming from Romans chapter 28, Romans chapter 8, verse 28, and then verses 31 to 39. Technology. <laughs> Romans chapter 8, verse 28, and then verses 31 to 39, reading from the NIV, the New International Version of the Bible. Amen. And we know that all things, God, in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. What then shall we say these of these things? If God is for us, mm. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will remain in charge of those who God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Mm. Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, 
neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers. Let's read together. Neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Isn't that good news? Isn't that good news? Let's remain standing as we sing our morning hymn in the name of Jesus. 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 We have the The world cannot give us the victory, but Jesus can give us the victory. And you ought to know today, no matter what you're going through, you have the victory. Come on, let's give God some praise in this house on today. 
at this time since the Connie and David will come with our announcements. Good morning, church. The announcements are as follows. Amen. Please join Pastor Rainsbury on the Monday morning prayer line at 6.30 a.m. And then on Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m., please join us for prayer meeting and meditation, and Bible study will be at 7. And then look out for a message from Reverend Rainsbury about our subject matter for our study for Wednesday evening. Our Good Friday service will be held here in the sanctuary on Friday, April 7th at 7 p.m. when we invite all of you to please come out for that service. And don't forget our spring cleaning day, which is Saturday, April 22nd at 10 a.m. We are asking you all to help come out and help clean the, the entire church, the sanctuary, the fellowship hall, all areas of the church will be cleaned on that day. And Reverend Lynette Wright is asking all women who are going to the women's retreat uh, to make you a $50 deposit to hold your seat. So please make your deposits to Sister Helen Tan to hold your seat for the women's retreat. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Connie. For those of you who are joining us by way of Facebook live stream, we say good morning to you. Thank you for coming and joining us this morning in this service. And um, <clears throat> I would say those who are joining us by way of conference call, but I had to shut it off because uh, uh, my friend over here uh, decided to, <laughs> to start speaking on his own. So we do apologize for that. Technology happens, it happens. And so we will rectify that. But to all of you who are joining us, again, even those who are here this morning, we say good morning to all of you. And we hope and pray that God is blessing you on this glorious morning. God has been so good to us and has made it possible for us to gather one more time in the house of prayer. And I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, while we're here today, or even beyond these walls, let us always be grateful. Look at all that's happening in our world today. And God continues to take good care of us. And so let us always be thankful to God for all his blessings. Amen? Amen. Amen. For Bible study, let's go ahead and look at the book of James. The book of James. You can start reading that now, starting with uh, chapter 1. We will jump into the book of James on Wednesday night for our Bible study. And we're asking all of you, join us for it. We have a good time in Bible. I mean, that, that book of Ruth, that thing just walked all over us. <laughs> it's just a little book, four chapters. But I'm telling you, we learned some valuable life lessons from the book of Ruth. So please, join us for Bible study. Join us for our moments of prayer as we come together to not only seek God's will in our lives, but also to study his word. And so we will begin a study in the book of James. So please, again, start reading that, and then we will begin that on uh, Wednesday night. It's, again, it's so good to see all of you here today. We pray that this service will be a blessing to your life as we worship God together today in his house. Amen? Amen. Amen. Our male chorus will not come with this election. Good morning. Good morning. You can see most of our men off today, so uh, we're going to do a, a medley, and I ask that we all join together and sing and praise the Lord for made up pieces that we all know. with 
a mind. I woke up this morning with my mind. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I woke up, woke up this morning with my mind. I woke up this morning with my mind. I woke up this morning with my mind. Hallelujah. Walking and talking with my mind. Stay on Jesus. Walking and talking with my mind. Stay on Jesus. Walking and talking with my mind. Stay on Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Singing and shouting with my mind. Stay Singing and shouting with my mind. Singing and shouting with my mind. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, woke up this morning with my mind. I woke up this morning with my mind. Up this morning with my mind. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Yeah, ain't no, ain't no. Do me like Jesus, do me like Jesus. Do me like the Lord, do me like the Lord. Ain't no. Do me like Jesus, do me like. One of the very important ministries in any church is the ministry of the Sunday school. Uh, many of us know the Bible because we were taken to Sunday school as children, even as uh, teenagers, as young adults, and our biblical knowledge and our relationship with God has been formed by the lessons we've learned in this great teaching ministry of our church. What I want to do uh, this year, and I think this will be the second time we're doing this, is um, every fourth Sunday, uh, we're going to have reflections uh, from the Sunday school uh, just to inform uh, the rest of the church and those who are watching of what we are learning in Sunday school and hopefully encourage you to come 
and join us as we engage in this very important Christian education activity. Sunday school is not only for children. Uh, we, you don't graduate <laughs> from Sunday school. Are you mad, somebody? Yeah, and, and there are members of our church who are here every Sunday for Sunday school, but we would like to see more and more of you to come and participate in this great ministry. And so this morning, uh, Deacon Reginald Brown will come and lead us in our time of reflections on what we've looked at uh, in Sunday school uh, this month or the past weeks, and he will give his reflection. And then, you know, this morning we learned a song while we were in Sunday school, and that song was led by Sister Safi, who is back with us. And so after uh, Deacon Brown finished his dissertation, <laughs> then Sister Safi will come and lead us in a very, very inspirational and informational Sunday school song. Listen to the words. Listen to the words. Because I guarantee you it will connect with you somewhere along the way. So Deacon Brown, will you please come now and give us your reflections. And then this will be followed by Sister Safi, who will come and lead us in singing. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning. I believe in the Bible is the word of God yes. from cover to cover. For the most part, the illustration presented in each lesson gives us an insight into how to treat each other in the line with the building of an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. The, 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 the instruction listed and discussed the, the scriptures and tools needed and how to go about building a lasting relationship with Jesus Christ with each and with each other. The scripture remind us that so reminds us that no matter I was no matter how we interact with each other. He will always meet us where we are and will lead us to a better place. He is also a forgiving God. If only we trust and obey. The scripture is also God's living word. It feeds our souls and guides us to Jesus. At the end of the day, I have learned that Jesus is always here for us and that we are our brother's keeper. And I close with this. I close with, and I close to say our mission is to make disciples of Jesus Christ by sharing the good news and the love of Jesus Christ with people in the community and throughout the world. Amen. Amen. Good morning, George. Good morning. Um, I want to encourage you. Sunday school is very important. Um, what we hear from pastor on the pulpit, you don't get it in Sunday school. And what you get in Sunday school, you don't get it up there. And when you are here in Sunday school, you are able to ask questions. You are able to ask questions and uh, make contributions. You learn from ex others' uh, experiences. It will help us. So I want to encourage you this morning. And my song this morning is, come to Sunday school every Sunday morning. Come to Sunday school. Come to Sunday school. Come to Sunday school every Sunday morning. 
Come to Sunday school. Come to Sunday school. Come to Sunday school. Every Sunday morning. Come to Sunday school. Always be on time. Always be on time. Always be on time. Every Sunday morning. Always be on time. Always be on time. Always be on time. Every Sunday morning, always be on time. Bring your Bibles, bring your Bibles to. Bring your Bibles to. Every Sunday morning, bring your Bibles to. Bring your Bibles to. Bring your Bibles to. Every Sunday morning, bring your Bibles. Bring someone, bring someone with you. Bring someone with you Every Sunday morning Bring someone with you Bring someone with you Bring someone with you Every Sunday morning Bring someone with you Yes! Come to Sunday school Come to Sunday Every Sunday Every Sunday morning Come to Sunday school I don't think it gets any clearer than that. <laughs> yeah. Come to Sunday school. Amen. Because the fact is Sunday school blesses us and it keeps us focused on God's word. Amen. Amen. I want to thank Deacon Brown and Sister Safi for blessing us today with the reflections and the reminder uh, that we need to come uh, to Sunday school. As we now move into this moment of prayer, again, please remember all those whose names have been mentioned uh, in prayer over the past few Sundays. But we want to continue to pray uh, for those who are sick and sudden, uh, those who are going through difficult circumstances. Continue to pray for our dear sister Georgia Harkless. Pray that God will be with her, be with her family. We want to continue to pray for Sister Jean and pray that God will continue to touch her body and give her the strength and recovery uh, that she needs. Please remember uh, the mother of uh, Reverend James Wright. Pray that God will touch her body and give her healing uh, also. And pray for the family. Yesterday afternoon they had a funeral here for a first cousin uh, who passed away. So please pray for uh, the bereaved uh, family. Uh, please lift up our own uh, chairman of deacons, uh, Deacon John Limus, who traveled uh, yesterday to Liberia. Pray that God will be with him and, and bring him back safely to us and others who are traveling, including uh, Sister um, Lillian Katasumi. Uh, she had to delay her return uh, to the United States from Uganda. So please lift her up in prayer, keep her uh, lift it up that God will be with her, bless her, keep her safe uh, because she's not only traveling alone, she's traveling with her daughter and we want to pray for God's covering upon her. You may be here today with a special prayer request or you may be here today uh, representing someone who said to you, pray for me. And if that is the case, that you're praying for someone today or that you are in need of special prayer requests, we invite you to please stand at this time where you are. And as we pray, we'll remember those individuals. Brothers and sisters, it is no secret what God can do. That what he's done for others, he'll do for you with arms wide open. He'll pardon you. It is no secret what God can do. So as we come, come with faith. Come knowing that as you pray, that God is listening and that God will answer prayer. Or something. Hmm? Hmm. 
Got a feel that everything's going to be all right. Oh, I, I've got a feeling everything's going to be. Oh, I, I've got a feeling that everything's going to be. Oh, be all right, be all right. Eternal God, our Father, we have this conviction that everything will be all right. And we are convicted by this because you have a track record of making the crooked straight. You have a track record of making the sick well again. You have a way of coming where there is darkness and you bring the light. So Father, we have no doubts whatsoever in our minds that as dark and dismal as things may seem right now, Somewhere in our heart, we know that everything will be all right. And it will be all right in your time. It will be all right in how you fix it, God, because whatever you set right is right for good. Oh, how we thank you for this another day of worship and we can come together and worship as brothers and sisters in your family thank you for waking us up early this morning and bringing us safely once more to this house of prayer as we come together God right now we want to begin by giving you the praise Oh, God, we say thank you. We say thank you, Lord. We can't list everything you've done for us because, Lord, we know you are a God who blesses us with things that are seen and unseen. But, God, we say thank you for all you have done for us. Indeed, you have brought us a mighty long way. As we come this morning, O oh Lord, you hear the prayer requests that are being lifted today. You are our mind reader. You are our heart reader. And God, you, you know what it is we're about to say even before we can form the words to give to you. And so now, God, we ask that you will have mercy. There are some who are sick among us. Have mercy. There are those who are bereaved among us. Have mercy, Lord. There are those who are going through difficult circumstances out of which they cannot see a way. But God, we know you're able to make a way out of no way. And so we pray now that you will build us up on every leaning side and remind us that you are indeed our Father who art in heaven. Father, we thank you for this time when we can come together to worship you and to praise you in your house. And so as you look throughout this congregation, I pray, Lord, that you will meet every need that is being lifted to you right now there are some who have come this day with burdens oh lord there are some who have come with anxieties there are some who have come wondering how am i going to make it this week there are some watching us right now who are walking through dark valleys and deep waters but god you promised us in your word that no matter what we go through you will always be with us 
And so we ask now, God, that you will give the assurance, that you will give the peace and comfort that comes with your presence, that we will know for sure that everything will be all right. Please continue to bless the West Hyattsville Baptist Church. Help us, oh God, to be the church you want us to be. Help us to be the church that will impact this community and impact this entire world. Help us, oh God, to continue to preach an uncompromising gospel that those who walk by or who drive by this church will know that Jesus saves and that no matter who you are, all you have to do is come to him and receive that invitation of eternal life. Please bless the United States of America. There is trouble in the land. Everywhere we turn, oh God, there's division. Everywhere we turn, there is the threat of violence and destruction coming from people who ought to know better. But God, we know that you are over us. You are covering us. Remind us, oh God, that blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. So bless America, and not only America, because you look throughout this congregation, and there are other nations represented in this congregation. Bless people everywhere. Let there be peace where there is war. Let there be food where there is hunger. Let there be water where there is thirst and drought. Look after those, O oh Lord, who are poor and cannot fend for themselves. Have mercy, O oh Lord. Have mercy. And then I pray, Lord, that as we continue to, to serve you, that we will step up and do our part to make this world a better place. Well, God, this is here another worship experience that you have invited us to participate in. So I pray, God, that the word that will go forth today will be a word that will bless your people. And if there be one here in this sanctuary today who has not yet met you in the pardoning of their sins, God, let this be their day. When they will come asking, what must I do to be saved? But God, this is our prayer. And we submit this prayer to you in faith. Knowing that you have heard us. And knowing that you will answer us. And so we present all these requests. In the name of your son Jesus. Who is the Christ. Let us all say together. Amen. Come to the mercy seat. Fervently kneel. Prayer. Now here's the invitation for you. He bring your wound. Don't take it back with you. He bring your hand. Oh, here's the good news. Don't miss this. Earth has no song, none that heaven that can. Oh, isn't that a blessing? And that you can come with your situations, with your issues. Bring him to God. Whatever is weighing you down, bring it to him. And there obtain grace and mercy. And God will help you, help you go through 
your difficult circumstances. Amen, somebody? Amen. Amen. Reverend James Wright is going to come and read our scripture. Following that will be another selection by our male chorus, and then I will return with this morning's sermon. Good morning. Our scripture this morning will be coming from St. John's, the fourth chapter. I'll read for our hearing verses 1 through 15. And it reads thusly, When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and, made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee, and he must need go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou would have had acts of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall never thirst again. But I, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water, that I thirst not, neither come heaven to draw. The word of God for God's people. Be blessed. Good morning, church. Um, I am not the men's choir, but I will be singing a song this morning. The song is called Alabaster Box, and it, it references a woman named Mary. It says in the Bible verse that Mary picked up an alabaster jar filled with ne nearly a liter of extremely rare and costly perfume, the purest extract of nard, and she anointed Jesus' feet. Then she wiped them dry with her long hair, and the fragrance of the costly oil filled the house. still as she made a way to Jesus she stumbles through the tears that made her blind she felt such pain some spoke in anger heard folks whisper there's no place here 
for her kind. Still on she came through the shame that flushed her face until at last she knelt before his feet. And though she spoke no words, everything she said was heard. She poured her love for the master from her box of alabaster. And I've come to pour my praise on him like oil from Mary's alabaster box. So don't be angry If I wash his feet with my tears And I dry them with my hair You were there The night he found me and you did not feel what I felt when he wrapped his love all around me. And you don't know the cost of the oil in my alabaster bar. I can't forget the way life used to be For I was a prisoner to the sin that had me bound And I spent my days pouring my life without measure into a little treasure box I thought I had found And until the day when my Jesus came to me And healed my soul with the wonders of His touch so now I'm giving back to him all the praise he's worthy of. I've been forgiven, and that's why I love him so much. And I've come to pour my praise on him like oil from Mary's alabaster box so don't be angry if I wash his feet with my tears and I dry them with my hair Jesus found me and you did not feel what I felt when he wrapped his love all around me and you don't know the cost of the oil no you don't know the cost of my praise you don't know the cost of the oil in my alabaster
get through it together. <laughs> I, I just need your support. Uh, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's a long passage, but the message uh, is in there. And uh, I'll do what I can to make sure we leave here before 3 o'clock today. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Amen. John chapter 4, reading from verses 1 to 4. Now, Jesus learned, I'm reading from the NIV. Now, Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. Although, in fact, it was not Jesus uh, who baptized, but his disciples. So he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria. I want to preach about when Jesus went to Samaria. When Jesus went to Samaria. The text before us today is a scriptural passage which reminds us of the power and influence of Jesus during his earthly ministry. Amen. By way of a quick review and in the interest of context before we get to John chapter 4, Jesus is called the Word in John chapter 1. Amen. He was the Word who was in the beginning. He was God and he was with God. Amen. In John chapter 2, Jesus demonstrated his power over nature when he performed his first miracle at a wedding in Cana of Galilee. You remember he turned water into wine. In John chapter 3, Jesus declares that anyone who expects to receive and enjoy everlasting life must first be born again. Amen. This person must believe that Jesus is indeed the Son of God who God sent to redeem the world. Amen. These scriptural scenarios provide context and clarity for the opening of John chapter 4, which is our text for today. The chapter opens with Jesus departing Judea and going to Galilee. Verses 1 and 2 of the chapter seem to imply that Jesus left Judea to avoid the hostility and confrontation of the Pharisees because the Pharisees, who probably felt jealous and insecure, the Pharisees observed that more and more people were being baptized and more people began to follow Jesus. So, so Jesus probably knew that the Pharisees in Judea wanted to criticize and antagonize him, so he left Judea and headed for Galilee. Amen. You know, my brothers and sisters, sometimes to avoid the problems with drama, yeah. you have to leave the presence of drama. Let me say that again. Amen. Sometimes to avoid the, 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 the problems with drama, yes, you have to leave yeah. the presence yeah. of drama. Hang around drama long enough mm. and drama will steal your joy. Drama will take your strength away. Amen. Drama will cause you to lose focus of your objectives and your goals. Drama will cause you to lose your mind. Amen. Sometimes you just have to pack your bags and wave goodbye yeah. and leave the presence of drama. Amen. Amen. Somebody better hear this today. Amen. Jesus left Judea because the Pharisees had the tendency to start 
and sustain drama. And Jesus decided this was not the time and the place for Pharisees' nonsense. So he said, I'm headed back to Galilee. I'll see y'all another time. Now, according to researchers and commentators, to travel as Jesus did from Judea to Galilee, the Jews typically took one of two routes. They would have to travel west by the Mediterranean Sea uh -huh. or travel east by Jerusalem and go up the Jordan River. Mm -hmm. Both routes allowed the Jewish traveler to bypass Samaria. Uh -huh. And this is what many Jews did. They avoided going through Samaria because the Jews despised the Samaritans for historical reason. Because of their history, Jews did not interact or engage with Samaritans in one form or the other. And does this, does this sound familiar, my brothers and sisters? Because, you know, this is happening today. Where one race of people d d decide to despise another race of people for historical reasons. Where, where one tribe decide to hate another tribe because of something that happened long ago. This happens today in families where one family hates the other family because of something that happened decades ago. This happens with individuals where individuals harbor and harness hatred, malice, and misunderstanding because something happened years ago and they don't even remember what it was. But they hate it. The Jews hate it. The Samaritan. This is how they treated him. They avoided coming in contact with the Samaritans by refusing uh -huh, uh -huh. to travel through Samaria. Amen. But in verse 4 of the text, something interesting happens. John writes in verse 4 that Jesus decided to go through Samaria. In fact, the text says that he needed, in the King James, he said must, needs. He needed to go through Samaria. Why, you may ask? Well, we, we must find out. Amen. Look, 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 look at verses 5 and 6, because when Jesus arrived in Samaria, he went to a city called Sychar. He found a well in that city that had historical significance because it was believed that the well belonged to Jacob. And you remember, Jacob was one of the patriarchs Amen. of Israel. Mm -hmm. Jesus sat on the well because he was tired. Amen. That's right. Okay? Mm -hmm. He was tired. Yeah. It was hot. Yeah. And the text says... It was around noon, I think in the King James it says the sixth hour. It was around noon. It's hot. He's in Palestine, which is desert land. And, 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 and after walking 40 something, maybe 50 miles, yes, you will get tired. Amen. Amen. And this shows Jesus' humanity. Amen. Amen. There were no planes, mm -hmm. no trains, mm -hmm. and no automobiles. Wherever you went, you had to walk or take a camel. And you know camel don't <laughs> you know how slow camels go. Or even ride a donkey. But Jesus had to walk. And when he got to Samaria, whoo, I can hear him now. He's tired. Amen. He's thirsty. He's worn out yeah. by this walk. Amen. The text reveals in verse 7 that while Jesus sat on the wall, a woman came to the well to draw water. Mm -hmm. This woman was not from Judea. She was not from Galilee. No, this woman was from Samaria. Amen. Amen. Let's take a look at some of these verses mm -hmm. and see what lessons we can learn when Jesus went to Samaria. Amen. The first thing we'll see, my brothers and sisters, is that when Jesus went to Samaria, he broke customs. He broke 
customs. The word custom is defined as a traditional and accepted way of behaving or doing something that is specific to a particular society, place, or time. Amen. Amen. Verses 7 to 9 lets us know that when a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? Amen. The disciples had gone to town to find food, and the Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew, yeah. Yeah. and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? And you see the note in there, for Jews did not what? Associate with Samaritans. I, I, I don't know if this woman was shocked or surprised, but she stated the obvious. She stated what was seen before her very eye. As I said earlier, it was customary that Jews did not deal with Samaritans. Amen. Jews viewed uh, Samaritans as unpure, mixed up, even called Samaritans half-breed because Samaritans are the result of intermarriages which occurred almost seven centuries before Jesus arrived on the scene. And they were saying, we are not going to deal with Samaritans. They had hostility and hatred and animosity towards the Samaritans. Well, apparently, this historical fact did not matter to Jesus because where did Jesus go? Jesus went to Samaria, and not only that, he spoke to a Samaritan woman. What customs, what traditions do we see in our world today that would prevent people from experiencing the love of Jesus. Is it a custom to tell people that they have to dress a certain way for them to come to Jesus? Is it a custom for us to tell people they have to look a certain way for them to come to Jesus? Is it a custom for us to tell people, you got to come from a certain family in order to get to Jesus. Is it a custom for us to tell people, you got to clean up what you messed up before you come to Jesus? Jesus recognized this woman's gender. He recognized her ethnicity. He recognized her culture. He recognized her status. And he still said to her, give me some water to drink. No matter who was watching. No matter who was taking notes. No matter who were giving comments, Jesus said to that woman, I'm going to talk to you today. I got plans for you. Give me some water. I want to say to someone today whose life has been defined and controlled by customs and traditions. And as a result, you begin to think that you are not good enough to come to Jesus. I need to tell you right now, you better come to Jesus. He will take you just the way you are. Jesus doesn't care about what you did. Last night, yesterday, last month, last year, in fact, he doesn't care about what you're doing right now. That what Jesus wants is to save you. He wants your soul to be succumb to him. Amen. Just as you are. Mm -hmm. I'm not telling you something that I heard. Amen. I'm telling you what I know. Amen. Because one Saturday night, 43 years ago, I came, I heard the voice of Jesus say, come on to me and rest. Lay down, O weary one, lay down thy head upon my breast. You know what I did? I came to Jesus just as I was, weary, worn, and sad. 
Can I tell you what I found? I found in him a resting place. Can I tell you what it did for me? And he has made me glad. He looked beyond my faults and he saw my knees and said, Thomas, I'll take you just to where you are. Amen. Praise him. Praise him. Jesus is in the custom breaking business. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Jesus is in the barrier busting yes. business. He'll walk through any custom, walk through any tradition, walk yeah. through any city and come to you and say, I want to save you. Amen. That's what he did with this woman. He came to her, came to the well. She walks up and he starts talking to her. Amen. Amen. And that conversation begins to bless her life. Don't let your customs or your traditions mm. stop you from getting to Jesus because Jesus is sitting at your well and he's waiting on you to come just the way you are. When Jesus went to Samaria, he broke customs. But not only that, when Jesus went to Samaria, he brought change. He brought change. This segment of this conversation with this Samaritan woman uh, uh, covered many areas. It covered the personal, the historical, and the theological. Amen. Think of this woman what you will, but her willingness to talk to Jesus, to ask and answer questions, speaks of her boldness yeah. even in the face of divine examination. Amen. Amen. This examination, however, made it possible for this Samaritan woman to receive something that she did not expect when she came to the well. This woman experienced a change in her life that forever altered her eternal destiny. Now, as I said before, the passage is long, so I'll just give you highlights of that passage. Because starting from here, verses 10 to 15, Jesus uh, 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 taught the woman about living water Amen. because she thought uh -huh. that the water Jesus was talking about mm -hmm. was a physical water. Amen. But he wanted her to know he was making reference to not a physical water, but a spiritual experience that she would have something in her heart and in her soul that cannot be quenched. Amen. In verses 16 to 18, Jesus got personal with the woman. He told her, go call your husband. She yeah. told Jesus, I ain't got no husband. Yeah. To which Jesus confirms and replies by telling her, yeah, you've had five Amen. husbands. Amen. And that Jesse you with right now, he's not your husband. Amen. Woo! Now, she thought that this stuff was a secret. Yeah, yeah. She didn't tell nobody. Now, some, 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 some people in the community yeah. may know because, you know, people drive around, yeah. look at your garage and your car pops. <laughs> they say, what car? Yeah, I, I saw his car over there. No, you didn't. <laughs> I ride a bicycle. You didn't see no car. <laughs> but, but, but Jesus knew. What was going on and said, go and get your husband. Now, we don't know why uh -huh. she had five husbands. It could have been that her husband died or it could have been by divorce. Amen. We don't know that. We simply do not know. Amen. One thing about Jesus, though. Mm -hmm. Jesus knows all your business. Amen. You can't hide Amen. anything Amen. from him. Jesus sees all, and he knows all. Now, please, my brothers and sisters, now that we have revealed this woman's secret, so-called secret, let's not get into the habit of condemning her. Hmm? Because when you look at the text, what's Highsville? Jesus reveals yeah. her lifestyle to her right. in her face. Yeah. Tells her this is what you're doing. Amen. But when you read the text, mm -hmm. 
Nowhere do you see Jesus condemning this woman. It don't mean that he condoned it. No. But his objective was to have this woman's life changed. One of the reasons why the church can't change folk. Because we're so busy condemning them. You did this. You're wrong. You did that. You wrong. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Why you want to go to a place where people are always telling you your mistakes? Why do you want to go to a place where people are always saying, mm-hmm, you, you thought you said you this, you said you that, and always giving you negative to Jesus did not waste time condemning this woman because he knew there was a spiritual need in her life in verses 19 to 24 there is a discussion about worship and in the verse in verse 26 Jesus gets to the point and letting the woman know because you see she had heard that the Messiah was coming it's something that has been historically known in Israel and Jesus cut to the chase and said I'm the Messiah I am he now, let's look at this woman, now that this has been revealed. Here she is, Samaritan woman. Mm -hmm. She's single. She has had five husbands. The man she's with now is not her husband. She is alone. Some say it was traditional, it was customary for women to come to the well to draw water. They will come together in crowds because they will come and talk. They will come and share a story. They will come in the morning or in the evening. But this woman came by herself. Amen. Which some commentators suggest that her business was already out there. And people were probably talking about her. Telling everything they knew about her. And so some suggest that instead of coming with the other women who talking about you behind your back, you might as well just come by yourself, get your water, and go on about your business. Amen. Amen. So she came by herself. Amen. Oh, but who's at the well? <laughs> Jesus Amen. is at the way, and he declares to her, since you're looking for the Messiah, uh -huh. I got news for you, baby girl. I am he. I'm the Messiah that Israel has been looking for. I'm the Messiah that, that you have been talking about. The prophets have foretold. I'm the Messiah. And, 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 and I've come today to bring change yes, sir. Yes, sir. to your life. Jump down to verse 28 and look what happened. And remember now, she came to draw water, right? Mm -hmm. Look at verse 28. Then, <laughs> leaving her water jar, the woman ran back, went back to the town, and said to the people, what? Come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of town and made their way towards him. He brought change yes, he to her spirit. He brought change to her mind. Yes. He brought change to her reputation. Amen. He brought change to her life. Jesus is a change agent. Yes. Whenever he walks in, whatever is there, something's going to have to change. I wish I had a witness here. Yeah. Because when you look back at your life, when I look back at my life, I will have to confess that when Jesus came into my life, I didn't change everything right away, but I've been walking with him and talking with him, and he's been walking with me and talking with me for 43 years. I need to tell somebody that over 43 years, the Lord has worked on me. There's been a change. Amen. And when he comes, mm -hmm. I know you might think, can't nothing change me. I beg to differ. Mm -hmm. 
get to know Jesus. Amen. And you will discover that he has power to change anybody. He has the power to change anything. Have I got any witnesses in here? He is a change agent. Here's this woman in her condition, mm -hmm. spiritually and socially. Yes. And Jesus comes in and changes her life. Amen. Tell you the truth, this lady, she's something else. Mm -hmm. Women did not talk in public with men Amen. in that culture unless you were related. But remember now, Jesus is a stranger. Amen. So what she was doing was bold. What she was doing was, was, was risky. Amen. In fact, when Jesus is, look at verse, look at verse uh, 27. When Jesus' uh, uh, disciples mm -hmm. came back, mm -hmm. and because they had gone to, to town to get food. Yeah. When they came back and saw Jesus talking with the woman, they said, whoa, 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 whoa. What are you doing, Jesus? Why are you talking to her? Because it was not customary. But I already told you, Jesus will break some customs to get to the soul he's trying to save. Amen. And you got to say something else about this girl. She was feisty. Amen. <laughs> when you read, when you read, and I know that King James has archaic message. Uh, uh, archaic translation, archaic uh, 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 language, I'm trying to say. If you read some other translations, he can almost sense her feistiness. Something about this girl. I, she, I mean, she's going at it. They're talking about worship, she got answer for it. Jesus, she, I mean, she just coming back at him. This was different. And the reason why is because Jesus didn't turn her away. It's possible, my brothers and sisters, no one has bothered to talk to her. Amen. Because they knew her business. Amen. Oh, but here's Jesus. Sitting there on that well. He's talking to her. She's talking to him. And at the end of this conversation, she puts down her water jug. Amen. At the end of the conversation, she probably backs up <laughs> from Jesus. And she takes off running. Where is she going? She going to the town where people know her business. She going to the town where people have probably maligned her character. She's going to the town where maybe some other men are looking at her with a cross eye and say, I don't believe that's her running down the road. She's going to that town, but this time she's saying, come see a man. Oh, yeah. Not the man in my house, no. Come see this man. Named Jesus. Jesus brings change. If you, listen, if you know someone right now who everyone has given up on. If you know someone right now for whom people have said, hey, ain't going to change. He's going to be like that till the day he die. Listen, get him or her to meet Jesus. Because when you meet Jesus, you will not leave the same. I wish I had a witness here. When you meet Jesus and he changes you, you your life, your spirit, your outlook on life is going to change. If you think I'm lying, ask this woman when we get to heaven. Because Amen. Amen. she'll tell you, yeah. I came to the well feeling low. I just got, I just wanted some water. That's all I came to do. Amen. And what did I get? I got a change Amen. in my life. Amen. When Jesus went to Samaria, he broke custom. When Jesus went to Samaria, he brought change. But thirdly and finally, when Jesus went to Samaria, he blessed communities. He blessed. Com Look at verses 49 to, I'm um, 39 to 42. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him. Why? 
because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything that I did. So when the Samaritans came to him, he urged, they urged him to stay with them. And he stayed with them how long? Two days. And because of his words, what happened? Many more became believers. They said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves. And we know that this man is really the savior of the world. Here's this woman, insignificant as she may appear. She begins to contact her community. Amen, amen. And Jesus, through this woman, yeah. reaches out to this community that reaches out to him. And he blesses them. How? Because they believe in him as the savior of the world. Now, they don't just see a man sitting on the well. Now, they see the Messiah. Now, they see Jesus, who's a friend to the friendless. Now, they see Jesus, who is a mother to the motherless. Now, they see Jesus, who is a husband to the widow. Now, they see Jesus, who is the savior of the world. All because they took the woman's testimony first. And then they said, we got to see this guy for ourselves. And when they saw him, they said, oh, you got to stay here two more days. And when he stayed, look what happened. Lives were changed. Lives. I keep thinking about Nicholson Street. I keep thinking about Asia Road. I keep thinking about Queen's Chapel. And I keep thinking about the fact that since we have this Jesus, I wonder where's Hyattsville. Are we willing to run to town and say to someone, walking, riding, biking, however, to say to them, come, see a man who saved my soul. Come, see a man who made me whole. Come see a man who changed my life. Come see a man who can change you too. And when we do that, West Highersville, you can see the change that God would bring to our community. Yes, I have heard, oh, Reverend, there's so many customs because, you know, People don't assimilate well into our church because of where we are. Listen. Jesus went to Samaria. And when he got there, customs were broken. Lives were changed. And a community was blessed. Don't tell me what God can do. If we get up and do our part, drop our water drugs, drop our traditions, drop our customs, go out there and tell somebody, come see him. Jesus went to Samaria. But Jesus can come to high Israel too. If you know he's done something for you, how he broke your customs, how he brought change, how he blessed you, what Jesus did for this woman, what he did for me, what he did for you, he can do for them. So the question is, Bring this back to a personal approach. Have you met this Jesus 
who was sitting on the well. Have you met this Jesus who doesn't care about your customs and traditions, about your history, about your reputation? The only thing he wants is your soul. Have you come to this Jesus who offers change, lasting change in your life? And who's willing to bless not only you, but your family, your community, your network, everything around you. All you have to do is come to this Jesus. And your presence at the well today is no accident. <laughs> no, it's not. Your presence at the well today happens because Jesus is here. He's not asking you for water, but he's asking you for your heart. And he's saying to you, will you give me your life today? And if you are here and you are unsaved and you have not allowed this Jesus to come in, this is your opportunity. This is your privilege to experience what this woman experienced. Life in abundance. Life everlasting. All you have to do is say, Jesus, I come. So we extend this invitation to you today. If you will come, give your life to Jesus. He's no longer in Samaria. He's right here. And all you have to do is come and give him your life. Receive him as your personal Lord and Savior. Those of you who are watching by way of Facebook, live stream, he is there with you right now. And all you have to do is open up your heart and say, Jesus, come into my heart. Save my soul. Make me whole. And he'll do it. If you're here today and you are a Christian, you've been saved, but you do not have a church home. Why don't you come and join us here at the West High Israel Baptist Church as we serve God together, as we go and grow together in the kingdom of God. There's much work to be done here at the church, but there's also much work to be done out there on the mission field. Why don't you come? Join us in this wonderful, exciting journey and let us serve God together. All you have to do is come. That's the invitation. Come. He's a custom breaker. He's a change bringer. And he's a community blesser. Just come as you are. The invitation is extended. You may come now. And if you're coming to join, you may come by letter, on your Christian experience, or by baptism. It's all up to you. Here's my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench of my soul. Bread of heaven. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Here's my cup, fill it up and make me. Here's my cup, Lord. Here's my cup, Lord. I lift it up. Come and quench. This thirsting of my soul, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. 
Here's my cup. Fill it up and make. Amen. Though there are none, there is still room at the cross for you. Though there are none, there is still room in West Hyattsville for you. All you have to do is come. Amen? Amen. Amen. Are there any persons here today who are worshiping with us for the first time? Anyone here today visiting for the first time? Will you please stand? Anyone visiting for the first time? All right. Looks like we're all here. If you're watching by Facebook and, and it's uh, your first time joining us, why don't you do a, uh, one of those what, likes and... Or, or, or type in the comment section, first time, and, and, and leave us your information. We'll get back to you. We'll, we'll do that. Thank God for technology. Amen. Amen. Let's give God praise in his house today. God has certainly blessed us with a day of worship, a day of praise, a time when we can come to hear his word, and now a time when we can participate in the ministry of stewardship. Thank God for what we have for what he has given to us, and we thank him for this opportunity to give back to him a portion of that which he has given to us. And so now, as the ushers come, let us bring our tithes and our offerings. For those of you who are watching by way of our social media platform, you can visit our website if you would like to give. Our website is, is uh, whbchurch.org. Uh, there is a give button on there. And you can give your offering, your tithe that way. It will lead you through the steps, and we will receive that at that time. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this time of giving. We thank you, O oh God, for the gifts. We thank you for the giver. We ask now, God, that you will bless these gifts that are being lifted today, that they will be used in kingdom building. This is our prayer. We pray in Jesus' name. Let us all sit together. Amen. Amen. Cast your burdens onto Jesus, for he cares for you. Cast your burdens onto Jesus, for he cares. Oh, cast your burdens onto Jesus, for he cares. Oh, cast your burdens onto Jesus, for he cares. Higher, 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 lift Jesus higher, lower, 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 higher, 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 lift Jesus higher, lower, 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 Onto Jesus, for He cares for you. Cast your burdens onto Jesus, for He cares for you. Higher, 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 higher. Lift Jesus, lower, 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 lower. Oh, higher, 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 higher. Lower, 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 higher, 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 Unto Jesus, for He cares. Oh, sing higher, 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 higher. Oh, sing lower, 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 lower. Oh, 
sing higher, 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 lower, 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 Amen. Amen. Cast your burdens onto Jesus. For he what? He cares for you. You got to lift him higher. And do what to that devil? Step on him. Yeah, step on him. Make sure he stays down there. And uh, that make sure that Jesus is raised higher every day. Amen. Amen. We certainly hope and pray that this service has been a blessing to your life. Jesus went to Samaria, but Jesus is also here today. Amen. And for that, we give him the glory. We pray and hope that you have a good week, this coming week. Pray that God will go with you and bless you, keep you in his care. And that on tomorrow morning at 6.30 a.m., we will meet for prayer and meditation. And then on Wednesday, we will come together at 6 p.m for prayer, meditation, and Bible study. And again, on Wednesday, we will begin a study in the book of James. So please come and study with us. You can go ahead and start reading that now as we come together to study God's word. Uh, please, again, give an ear to all the announcements that have been made. Uh, I think when we come back next Sunday, we'll be in a new month. I mean, we were just at New Year's service the other day, and here we are about to go into month number four. Amen, somebody. But God is good. Amen. 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 So we'll come together on next Sunday for worship, and now as we prepare for uh, our passion celebration of uh, Good Friday, which will be April the 7th at 7 p.m., and then um, Easter Sunday, Palm Sunday will be uh, next Sunday, I believe. You'll be next Sunday, and uh, we will have palms uh, for all of you who will come. On Easter Sunday, following morning worship, I would like for all of us, before we run out and have dinner, on Easter Sunday, I would like for all of us, members and visitors, to assemble on the front of the church, as many as we can get in there. And Deacon Alvin Harris, um, who is a photographer, uh, assisted by uh, our own brother Michael Tan. <laughs> What's up, Mike? <laughs> uh, Mike is also a, a good uh, photographer. But we're going to take a family portrait as a church on the front of the church. We will do the first one with everyone, again, as many, because we know we will have visitors on that day. And then we'll do a second shot with just the members of the church, okay? So on, the, uh, on Easter Sunday, uh, we will gather on the front of the church after service and, and have those, it won't be that long, because he was set up before we even get outside. Um, and have those two shots taken um, for our records, uh, for our history, because West Hyattsville has come a long way. Amen. 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 And, and so if you don't mind, uh, ma'am and, and sir, uh, on that day, please let's meet up front at the, after church and Dick and Harris will uh, take a picture of us. Uh, that all of us can have access to, because again, we are family. Amen. 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 God bless you. Go out and enjoy this beautiful day. It's a gorgeous day. Yeah, beautiful, warm weather day. And let's go out and enjoy this day that God has given us. We got more daylight now. Amen. Uh, you ain't got to go to bed early. <laughs> go in like I do. Go in too early. But let's just go out and enjoy God's nature, God's creation, and let us just be grateful to God for all his goodness. Remember all those, again, whose names were mentioned in prayer. We pray that God would be with them and would bless them in their 
uh, situation and will deliver them also because the God we serve is a mighty, mighty good God. Let us stand. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for breaking customs. We thank you for bringing change. We thank you for blessing communities. We ask now, Lord, as we leave this place, that you will let this message resonate within our, our hearts, our minds, not only for us, but also for those who are living in Samaria. To let them know that others may hate them, but Jesus loves them. Let us give them a message of hope so they will come seeking this man named Jesus and giving their lives to them. Help us to be the light. Help us to be messengers that give this world a positive spiritual message to let him know that everything will be all right. Go with us now as we leave this place. Go give us traveling mercies and Take us home safely or wherever we're headed. And we pray, God, that if it is your will, you'll bring us back together on next week as we come to celebrate Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. We love you today. We thank you for what you've done, what you are doing, what you're going to do in our lives. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest, rule, and abide in our hearts from now henceforth and forevermore. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. See you next Sunday. God has spoken. Let the church of this room enjoy your day. Yeah.